I want to take this opportunity to welcome you today to the 2024 Kentucky Prayer Caucus Call to Prayer. I am very appreciative of you taking time to come be with us today uh, at this gathering. I'm, I'm honored that the Lord has allowed us to come to the Capitol building in the rotunda here and lift up the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen to that this morning? To be able to lift up that wonderful name above all names, whose name is Jesus. We have a lot of guests with us today. Uh, I know that some of our representatives will probably have to be leaving in and out as we, as we progress through this. There's a lot of meetings going on. There's a lot of <clears throat> events happening today as we are actually in our last eight days of obsession. But uh, if, and, and if some of them have to leave, we, we certainly understand that. But we're glad today that several of them, many of them have came. Actually in the back of the room, or the back of the rotunda over here, and this is uh, for the legislators that are here today, we have a proclamation that I would like for all of our legislators, if they would, to sign before you leave. It is just putting your signature that you believe that prayer is one of the most powerful things that there is. Amen. And that by the power of prayer, I believe we can change America. Amen. I believe we can change Kentucky. Amen. And I believe we can see a great change happening in our country. And again, I, I so much thank you. My name is David Hale. I am a state representative that represents the 74th legislative district in eastern part of Kentucky. And I have been serving in the role as the chairman of the Kentucky Prayer Caucus now for the last five years. And it has been my honor. I, I appreciate those that are a part of this caucus. We meet here in our chapel, which is up on the second floor of this building, two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 for a, about a 20-minute gathering for prayer. And uh, we would love to have anybody join us. I know this year our time is about gone, but we will be continuing this next year, hopefully. But we just get together and pray for each other and uh, lift up each other and encourage each other. You know, today we come here as the body of believers. We're Protestants, we're Catholics, we're Jews, but we all belong to the same God. And we're worshiping the same God. And I'm glad for that today. I'm thankful that we can come together as a, as a body of believers into his, into his presence and here today into this uh, rotunda building in the state capitol. I want to just share a short scripture with you, and hopefully everyone has got a program, and we're going to try to stay on program uh, as, as closely as we can so uh, you can see who will be following each of the speakers. And then we have a couple of songs that are in there as well. But one of the verses of scripture I want to start us out with today, and I read this last year at this same event, out of the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, and it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. What a wonderful scripture that is. If we, as God's people, will pray, let's pray. That is a powerful, powerful tool that we all have. And I know that I'm speaking to people today that knows what that is. You know, in the book of Isaiah, sometimes a, 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 some of, even some of our constituents think that us as legislators should not be involved in activities, political activities, and, and spiritual activities. I don't know where they get that from, because my Bible tells me in the book of Isaiah, the old prophet Isaiah, he prophesied of the forecoming of the Messiah, Jesus, 750 years before he was ever born, but he said the government shall be upon his shoulders. In other words, he is the one that upholds the government. He is the one that we need to put our trust in as government officials today. And so I believe that we as legislators, we as people that are in government, we have a duty to represent not only our people, but if God sends us here, we have a purpose to lift up his name in this place. And I'm so thankful for that today. I want today to begin 
first by prayer, praying, and I'm going to pray for each one of you. And, uh, and again, there may be others that will be joining us, but let's just join together. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to stand as we do the opening prayer today, this afternoon. And then we will be, the, the people that will follow me will come. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven this afternoon, as we gather here in the people's house, this is the house of the people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And we have come here today to lift up that wonderful name of Jesus. We gather here to pray. We gather here to call upon your name. We gather to worship. We thank you for our state. We thank you for all of the people in our state government. We thank you for all of our elected officials. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one of us that have been given this opportunity to serve here in this house, our constituents. But more so even than that, we're thankful that we have the opportunity to serve you today. And I ask you to bless every representative, every senator, every constitutional officer, I pray for the governor of our state. I ask you, Lord, to guide and lead all of us in the path that we ought to go down. Thank you for the men and women that have come today that are going to participate in this event. I ask you to bless each and every one of them as they come to offer prayers, prayers for Kentucky, for our citizens, for our churches, for our people. And this is a time. I believe, Lord, as the Bible says, we were brought here for a time and a purpose. And I pray that we will fulfill that purpose in the time that we are permitted to be here. Now bless everyone that's gathered here today, and we thank you again for your goodness and your mercy. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen and amen. And you may be seated at this time. Our first individual that will come today is Representative Kim King. Thank you, Brother David, and thank you all for being here today. As only the Lord can orchestrate, uh, Brother David's comment and passage that he referenced actually goes along with the faded copy <laughs> that I brought from my desk that I've had on my desk for right at 14 years now. But to your point of government and uh, faith being intertwined, I do believe that to be the case indeed. So I hope this brief period of, of scripture will be an encouragement for my colleagues and anyone in leadership positions. So this is from Exodus 33, 12 through 15. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, leave these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, take comfort in that, he knows you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your way so I may know and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Don't we need that? <laughs> then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, it's such an honor to just stop in the middle of a busy day and just worship you and make sure that we have you on the throne today. I'm so encouraged by this passage and um, I feel confident praying those words back to you because you included it in your Bible. So thank, thank you and thank you for it still being relevant today. I pray for health and safety and strength and encouragement and wisdom and discernment um, and your touch as we finish out these last days of session. Thank you for being with us thus far, and we'll just give you all the thanks and the glory for leading us um, and being with us as we try to do your work here in Frankfurt. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Next on our program today is a young lady that is going to come and share a worship song with us today. I heard her sing a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, and I invited her back to be with us today, Miss Ashley Bader. So, Ashley, would you come this afternoon and share with us today?
I believe after a beautiful song like that, the Lord deserves another round of applause after that. So praise Him today. He's worthy of our praise. I, I am honored today to have with us as our next individual is going to pray is Mr. Dwight Butler with the Kentucky Baptist Convention. Mr. Butler, would you please come, please? How would you all like to follow that? <laughs> beautiful. That was simply beautiful. Excellent. Well, again, uh, it's a great honor to be here, and I can speak from a little different perspective by being on both sides of the, not aisle per se, but from being a legislator and now being a lobbyist. And so I know a little bit of what the pressure is that's on you all, and it is extreme. And you need our prayers, and again, you know, that's what you all are doing. Pray for them. Pray for their wisdom. Pray for the hedge of protection around them because it is vital. But let's go to the Lord and pray. Father, we just thank you for letting us be here today to praise your name. Father, to honor you. Father, it is such a glorious day where we can come and pray in peace without threat. And we can just come and speak to you in freedom. And Father, we know that you established government to have rule and peace and security. And Lord, we know that you put these legislators and these elected officials in their place for your purpose. 
Father, we just praise you again. We thank you. We honor you. And Lord, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for his suffering, his death, his resurrection, and the Holy Spirit that lives in us, Father, today. Lord, again, I pray, again, the, the peace, the protection on these elected officials, all the government workers here, Lord, and just let them see your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Butler, so very much. It probably surprises some people that I'd invite a lobbyist to be one of our prayer, prayer warriors today. <laughs> But, but, but he lobbies for great causes and he lobbies for great pieces of legislation. And I appreciate him accepting my invitation. At this time, Miss Beth Cooper is going to come. Miss Cooper is the state director of the Congressional Prayer Caucus Network. This lady does an incredible work, and I'm very honored to work with her and her helping me put this on today. Miss Cooper. Thank you, Representative Hale. Thank you. And I couldn't do what I do without the help of Joyce Strazik, wherever she is working and, and doing. There she is in the corner. Um, it is a privilege to serve the legislature as a prayer covering. Um, in 2005, representatives from the U.S. House met in room 219 in our nation's capital, and they began to pray for the restoration of America. Shortly after that, the Congressional Prayer Caucus was established, and its sole purpose is to represent religious freedom in our nation. So we certainly appreciate the service of Representative Hale and his leadership of the Prayer Caucus. And what I want to ask you is, would you join me today in asking God, do it again. Restore us. Awaken this nation to the understanding of what you have called us to be, God. Will you join with me in that? Father God, we thank you for the great Commonwealth of Kentucky. We thank you, Father, for the foundation of this state and that this state has been established through the kneeling to the knees in prayer, humbly asking for your will to be done in this state, God. And we thank you that these legislators that are represented here and many that were not able to make it over, God, we thank you that they do the same, that they kneel before you in prayer and they ask God, what would your will be for this state? And so, Lord, we thank you for that. And even as the state carries the shape of a key, God, I ask that Kentucky be a key that unlock the United States of America to the calling and to the will and to the, to the petition, God, of awakening in our nation, restoring back the expectation that Jesus, your blood, covering this nation will heal this nation and restore us to alignment with you, Father God. So we thank you. We thank you for the legislature. We thank you for our constitutional officers, God. And we praise you for this great commonwealth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. And again, she does a phenomenal job in her, in her role, and I'm very much honored to work with her. At this time, one of my great friends, a godly man, Representative Steve Rollins is going to come and offer up. Representative Rollins, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I feel honored that David asked me to pray, but to be honest, I'm really disappointed and discouraged right now. Some of the things I've heard this morning, some of the news I've gotten, some of the things I've witnessed, and it's a challenge down here. It's so hard sometimes, and it just seems like we run into a wall so often. But when I see a crowd like you, it really is encouraging. Don't ever underestimate how important that you yes. all are to us and how much yes. you mean to us to yes. come to come here, make the trek here and Appreciate stand behind us. So let's pray, Lord. Um, it, it is a discouragement so often and it's so difficult, but you're always, you're always there for us. You help us, you guide us, you show us the way and we just got to persevere. You got to show us our, our, our perseverance and, and to keep trucking, keep trying. And in the second Timothy, you tell us to do the work of an evangelist. You teach us to do that work. And I pray that you'll, you'll continue to sh let us share how good you are, the peace that people can find in you, the rest, the wisdom and the power and, and the glory that you, you have for us. And it's just uh, hard to overcome these things and to spread your gospel. And please give us every opportunity to spread your word, be salt and light in this community and what appears to be a dark times sometimes, but um, we know we always have you. 
we thank you so much for being with us and helping us to overcome. Thank you for being there for us, and we look forward to your glorious return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Rollins, so much for that. It is an honor today for me to introduce a lady that needs no introduction, Miss Allison Ball, our state auditor. Miss Ball, I want to say this publicly. God has got an anointing upon your life. God has got an anointing upon your work. You are a lady that represents not only your people, but the Lord is in you. I can see it. And I'm so honored today to have you with us. Would you please come at this time? Well, good afternoon. What a great day to be here. I'm always honored when I get the chance because I know that there are intercessors in the room. Amen. I know that you are praying for what happens here, what happens yes. in our state, what happens in our country. I know that you're praying this all the time. Uh, but I'm just honored to be with you uh, who are making such a tremendous difference in the kingdom all the time. So God bless you. Thank you for being here. I had a few thoughts that I wanted to share real quick. Uh, I was thinking about last year, what we saw, and I know you all know this, uh, what we saw was so amazing last year at Asbury with the Asbury Revival that lasted for, I think, 19 days. I went over there about five times. Uh, my husband went, my children went, my parents went, my brother went. We all went several times. And it was just a great reminder of how God is still working, God is still moving, and it was a glimpse of heaven during that time. And I want to encourage you, I don't believe that was isolated for those 19 days. I don't believe that was the end, that was the purpose, and that it's done. I really do believe, as over at Asbury, they're saying there's an outgoing of the outpouring. I do believe that is happening, but I also believe that God is working in so many ways in addition to that. It wasn't just that. There's so much. And, uh, and I agree with what Beth was saying about there's something special about Kentucky. Last year, shortly after the outpouring, there was a group of folks from North Korea who came over to go to Cane uh, Run because they knew full well about what had happened there in the revival uh, 200 some years ago. They knew full well what happened and they knew full well what happened in Asbury. And they came, they flew over here for the sole purpose of praying for America, but they wanted to do it from Kentucky. So I wanna encourage you, I wanna encourage you who are here, who are such great prayer warriors, warriors I wanna encourage you, I know that nothing great and of God happens without beginning in prayer. Like I know that to be true. So I want to encourage you. I want to thank you. I want to stand with you. I want to join you. But you have a special anointing on each of you. So I want to encourage you. Nothing great happens without prayer. You are in that. So I want to encourage you in that. And I also think that it's often true that nothing great of God happens without persistent prayer. So I think you are in that persistence part right now. So I want to encourage you. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep persisting in prayer. We need you. I'm so grateful for you. Uh, I'm honored to pray with you today, but I'm just joining in with what you are doing. So if you would please, uh, we'll, we'll just pray real quick. Heavenly Father, thank you for the men and women and the children who are here today, uh, especially uh, the little boy who I just saw a moment ago, who I believe may be Beth's grandson. Uh, and I just want to thank you that there is no junior Holy Spirit, Lord, and that he is here along with everyone else praying before you for Kentucky and for America. And Lord, I just ask you to move in power from this time today. Lord, we ask to further your kingdom and we ask for uh, the things of you to advance from this place today, Lord. We ask for uh, truth and wisdom and discernment to come from the laws that are passed here and the policies that proceed from here, Lord. But we ask you to uh, move in the lives of everybody who's involved in government here, Lord. Uh, help them to truly encounter you and who you are the reality of who you are, Lord, and for your kingdom to advance through those connections, Lord. Thank you so much for all that you have done. Please continue to work through Kentucky as you have in the past. Continue to bless America and help this to be a place, Lord, where you are glorified and the things of you advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Miss Ball. What an honor it is to have you with us today to take time from your schedule to come be with us. The next individual that is going to come is a man that I have come to really love. I have come to really appreciate Rabbi Litvin. We have become wonderful friends over the last few years. I truly appreciate your work, sir, and I thank you for being a part of our event today. Would you please come at this time? <clears throat> Good 
Representative Hale asked me if I could be here today, and I said, as long as I could follow uh, Otter Ball, I'll be fine. Pray with me. O oh God and God of our fathers, great, mighty, and revered, God, I stand here today among those assembled who seek your word to issue and to answer the call to prayer. As you called to Abraham and he responded, here I am. As you called to Moses at the burning bush and he responded, here I am. As we call to prayer, each of us here say, here we are to pray for our commonwealth. We know that we're not the first to gather in this fashion in this land. In fact, prayer and faith are part of the foundation of this country and of this commonwealth. We gather today as the Jewish community commemorates the fast of Esther in preparation for the festival of Purim. Esther stood in Persia, not as a queen in power, but seemingly oppressed. Her faith, however, could not be oppressed. So she went to face the most powerful ruler in the world. But before she did, she lifted her eyes to the king of kings, to the creator of heaven and earth, and she prayed, if I find favor in your eyes. We stand here today in the shadow of President Lincoln and across from Senator Henry Clay at Senator Cray's funeral, the first American to ever lay in state in the Capitol. President Lincoln concluded with these words, such a man these times have demanded and such is the providence of God was given us. When Haman's evil decree rose and someone was needed, Esther rose not as a coincidence, not as a happenstance, but this was the reason you were brought into a position of power. When America needed a leader, needed someone who could bring people together to compromise, as President Lincoln acknowledged, God lifted up from the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Senator Clay, to be that person. And as we have critical issues today for the future of our Commonwealth, for the future of our nation, and for the future of the world, and for the children therein, we must rise. God, I ask you to cast your blessing today upon all those gathered here, specifically on Brother Hale, who brought us together, mm -hmm. on Sister King, and Representative Rawlings, Auditor Ball, Treasurer Metcalf, uh, Representative Fugate, and all those others who are gathered here today, who are gathered in service to your word, and to establish just laws as is commanded in one of your seven universal statutes for all mankind. Strengthen their hand wherever they reach on behalf of your children to the, for the benefit of the commonwealth. And God, I ask that as you cast your blessing upon America and cast your blessing upon the people of the commonwealth of Kentucky, that you also cast your blessing upon those who we cannot forget. The over 100 people still being held hostage by the Hamas terrorists in Gaza, including six Americans, including a nine-month-old baby, including old people, young people, who were stolen from your land that you promise in Deuteronomy that your eyes shall be on from the first day of the year to the last day of the year. We ask that you uplift those folks, that you bring them back to their people in peace, that you bring swift justice upon those who would kidnap them. I ask that you cast your blessing today, that you hear our call to prayer, that you hear our response. Hinnany, here I stand, and bless us all here in the Commonwealth. Amen. Thank you very much, Rabbi. And I would like to add, I am honored as an American. I pray that this country that I am a citizen of continues to support our friends in Israel. That we continue to support the efforts and that the leaders of our country would not turn their back upon our Israeli friends. Because I can quote you verses of the scripture, which I want, I could break out into preaching, but I won't. But the Bible is plain. If we support these folks, God will bless us. But if we turn our backs on them, as we are seeing some of our high-ranking officials do, then we are cursed. I desire to be a blessed people. Amen. Rabbi, we stand with you and the nation of Israel today and your Jewish people. You cer we certainly do, absolutely. Our next guest today is an incredibly wonderful friend of mine, Bishop Tony Cooper. Bishop Cooper is the administrative bishop of the Kentucky Church of God, uh, as of which I am a part of as one of those pastors. He oversees approximately 240 
churches in our state of, in our Commonwealth of Kentucky. And today it is my distinct honor to welcome Bishop Tony Cooper. Brother Cooper. Thank you, sir. You have you, sir. I'm you. It is a delight and honor to be here today, and I do want to give honor to State Representative Hale. He's also one of my pastors. He also serves on my state council, and I seek counsel and guidance from him as well. All of our elected officials that are here, and all of you who are prayer warriors in this room. Kentucky has 120 counties. We have 48 counties that do not have a church of God in them, but we're praying and believing for church planners to go to those counties. But the reason the 120 is so important because that's how many started the church and the body of Christ that we're all part of in the upper room. And so I'm believing Kentucky as a bellwether state, a state that leads the way in revival. There's been a lot of articles, uh, Mrs. Ball, in regards to the Asbury revival and outpouring and how that it's spreading around the world and it's impacting not only the United States of America, but the nations of the world. What happens in Kentucky is a forerunner of what's going to happen in our nation and around the world. And the Bible said in Psalms 33 verse 12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And we are in a blessed nation today. And I want you to bow your heads and pray with me, please. Father, I thank you for the honor of prayer in this great building. Father, there's been many people elected to serve in office who serve you as well as their constituents. I pray your favor and blessing over their lives today. Father, I felt the burden and the heaviness of State Representative Rollins as he spoke today. Heavenly Father, I know that we live in crucial times. Heavenly Father, I know that this is an election year. And Father, your people, which are called by your name, should not only pray, but get out and vote. Your people, which are called by your name, should not only pray, but they should run for office in this great state and be elected officials so that, Lord, that those that you put over us to rule would rule us with grace, humility, dignity, and respect. Father, we do pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Israel today. Not in Yehu, that you would give him divine wisdom and knowledge as he navigates the world stage of criticism. I pray, dear Lord, that you would raise up more women and men of God in this great state who will lead our people to go after you. Father, as I remind all 242 congregations in the state of Kentucky, pray for those who have been elected to rule over us, that it may go well with us. We speak your peace today, not only to Jerusalem, we say not only shalom to them, but God of peace, touch our nation and bring revival, fire upon us, and the peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Bishop. Awesome prayer. I appreciate that very much. It is a great honor today to have our newest constitutional officer with us today, a man that I have come to know over the course of the last uh, several months, our new state treasurer, Mr. Mark Metcalf, a man of God, a man that believes in prayer, a man of faith, and uh, Treasurer Metcalf, we are honored today. Thank you for accepting my invitation to come and be with us today. Would you make welcome Treasurer Metcalf? Thank you. Well, thank you for the warm welcome. I, I worked for Harold Rogers. It was my first job out of college. Uh, he took me to uh, a congressional uh, prayer breakfast. I think that what they called the National Prayer Breakfast. Uh, the host was uh, Mark Hatfield, a senator from Washington State. He greeted everyone uh, by their titles, by their ranks, all the military officials, the judges, uh, the members of Congress. And then he paused and he said, and I'd like to welcome the sinners. And then he asked the question, did I leave anybody out? The answer was he left no one out. And you, Brother Hale, have left no one out today. Thank you. I, uh, 
have a rule given to me when I first got into politics. Uh, the three Bs, be interesting, be brief, and then be seated. So I will be brief, hopefully interesting, and uh, then I'll be seated. It's always a problem uh, for me uh, to, to come to these kinds of events because inevitably I'm going to follow somebody like Brother Hale, Rabbi Littman, or the worst of all possibilities, I'll be following Allison Ball. And you know, when you follow Allison Ball, you know what the guy who had to follow up behind uh, Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth felt. I get the same sensation every time. We're faced by challenges and difficulties these days, and I want us to refer to a word, two words. One is fearless, and the other is courage. What is courage? It's not the absence <clears throat> of fear. It is the ability, the faith, and the confidence, <clears throat> and the hope to act despite fear. So let us have courage today. Uh, courage is actually taken from the French word cour, which means heart. So let us have heart. Let us take heart today. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been fighting a cold for a week now. So let us take heart today. Let us have courage. And let us also be still. Be still. And <clears throat> be still and know that I am God. Yes. Amen. And with that uh, kind of courage, that kind of confidence, our state and our nation will be redeemed and restored. Let us, let us pray. Thank you, uh, dear Lord, for letting us gather <coughs> today in this thy building, which you raised stone by stone, brick by brick, and pillar by pillar. We thank you that we can come together as people of faith. Renew us in the spirit of thy truth. Bring us together again that we may join in this place and worship thee in the spirit and in the truth of thy word. In the name of thy son we pray and for his sake. Amen. Some water just after I needed. Thank you, Treasurer Metcalf. We appreciate you being with us today. We are going to invite back Miss Ashley Bader again, that is going to give us another worship song. I'm going to ask you today if you could, would you just please stand? And as she sings, let's worship with her because I know she has a, a beautiful song to present us with today.
Wasn't that, wasn't that a beautiful song? A wonderful song. Behold our God. As we come to the conclusion today of our gathering, our worship service, our call to prayer, our closing prayer is going to be given to us by a gentleman that is an awesome guy. He's an awesome man of God, a great friend of mine. I think even I'm a little bit responsible for him being here, to be honest about it. I don't know if sometimes he likes me for that or doesn't like me for that. You might have to ask his wife that. But uh, Pastor Chris Fugit, Representative Chris Fugit from the Gospel Lighthouse Baptist Church in Hazard, Kentucky. Representative Fugit, but my brother in Christ. I love you today, sir. Me too. God bless you. You know, the, the Bible says in... Uh, Psalm 145, they shall abundantly utter the goodness, the memory of thy great goodness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness. As I read the Bible, I can, we can all tell stories of what God did for the children of Israel crossing the Red Sea. We can tell stories of how he delivered Daniel out of the lion's den and the three Hebrew children out of the fiery furnace. I can tell we can read history of great revivals across the nation and the, even the, all the world. Different times, different revivals have come and we've seen people saved and turn their hearts back to Christ. But I, I'll be honest with you today, I don't want to live on yesterday's memories of God's goodness. I want to see God do something today. Yes. I want to see God do something in our hearts today. I want to see God do something in our state today. Yes. I want to see God do something in our churches today. I don't want to talk about what he did yesterday. I'm thankful for what he did yesterday. But I'm excited to see what God wants to do tomorrow yes, and the day after. There's also a verse that follows that one that says, One generation shall declare thy works to, to the next generation. Somewhere along the line, we've dropped the ball. And I think it's up to us as our generation to tell the little ones, we've got some young people from our church here today. I want them to see the goodness of God. I don't want them just to see the goodness of God. I want them to experience the goodness of God. I want our young people all across the state to know there's a God in heaven that hears our prayers, that sees our work for him, that wants to bless us as a nation. God, bless, God will bless America as we bless God as a nation. So let's pray together today. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Today, this is your day, the Word of God says, you made it, you allowed us to live in it. And Lord, we thank you for all the things you've done in the past. We thank you for those that have been saved in the past, and Lord, how you've blessed our nation in the past. But Lord, we're here today. We're asking you to do that again today. We're asking you to put your hand of blessing on us today. Lord, we're asking you to do something in, in my heart today, my heart first. And Lord, may you work in the hearts of every person that's here. But Lord, as we go across back home to our own towns and counties and hollers, Lord, I pray that we would make sure we're faithful to carry the gospel to every person that we meet. Lord, may we carry the gospel to every person that we, Lord, even though they may not look like us, be like us, may not have anything, Lord, may we be willing to put our arms around them and tell them about the love of Christ. 
Thank you for loving us so much. Lord, we owe you everything in our lives. Lord, I pray that you'd bless our young people. I pray that you'd help them to see your goodness, to experience your goodness. Lord, we need you today. We have to have you in this place. Thank you for letting me serve here. Thank you for my church. Lord, that you allow me to pastor and for the people that are here today. Lord, that support me being here in this place, fighting for right. And God, I pray that you bless every legislator. Lord, there's a lot of good Christians up here, Lord, that are standing for you. May we continue to stand in boldness with you and for you. May we stand for right, Lord. And when times get hard, as Brother Rollins said, Lord, may we continue to look to you for strength and for your power. And Lord, that you may be glorified and lifted up. Lord, when it's all said and done, may we be like Paul and say we finished our course. We kept the faith. We fought the fight that you'd have for us to fight. Lord, again, we love you. We pray this in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chris. Again, today, I want to thank you for coming. I appreciate all of those that came and offered prayers. A lot of our legislators were here with us earlier. A lot of them had to leave for a 1 o'clock meeting, but I appreciate those coming earlier and those that are still with us. It is such an honor to see you here today. We need your prayers. We need your prayers. We pray for you, and we need you to pray for us. And again, I just want to thank my legislative colleagues that allows me to serve in this role as the chairman of the, of the Prayer Caucus of the state of Kentucky here. We're, we're honored. We, we feel blessed to be here to represent you and our communities. But even so more than that, to come here and lift up the name of Jesus, the Almighty God. Again, thank you so much today for coming. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. And happy Easter coming up in a, in a few days to everyone. God bless you today is my prayer. Thank you.